call of worship. Three and four. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. We are His people yes. and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into the, His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. We, on behalf of Lubbock and Amarillo, Amen. welcome you and your family. Amen. 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 Lubbock, are you in the house? Yes. Amen. Stand up. Amen. All right. Lubbock is Amen. in the house. All right. Amarillo, are you in the house? Yes. On behalf of Amarillo, Lowe, the pastor, officers, and members of this church, welcome all of our guests. Amen. Now, I do have a uh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get to them. Hold on. One second. One second. Mm, I got this. All right. <laughs> Be here. 
here and thanking God for one more Sabbath. I do have just a few announcements. This is not the traditional bulletin, so I am real. I know you're looking for when the sun is going to set and all that. You're going to have to use your phone today. <laughs> it says at 649, in case you were wondering. So we will be having AY today at Vintage Youth Program. AY is for everyone, amen. amen. And so Jamari is our AY director, has a wonderful program for you today. So we'll be starting AY at 545 today. So we look forward to seeing you all back here. Please remember um, that, gentlemen, uh, men of Mount of Blessings, on March the 22nd, we will commence with renovating the back classroom, and we will need your muscles to be able to bring the furniture in, so please know that I'll be following up with you about that. Uh, we also want to remind you to remember of the church budget and your giving, and I thank you for your time and attention, and happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord, it looks wonderful in here. Amen. And, and I, I don't want to mess up the program anyway because we did a lot of work putting together, but I just want to take time to praise the Lord. Uh, I didn't just come to install a new pastor, I came to lift Jesus up. Amen. And I was just wondering if I could find somebody who would help me lift him up. Now, now if you don't lift him, don't, you know, that won't matter because I'm going to lift him by myself. But if you join in, we can lift them together. Somebody say, why do you want to lift up Jesus? Because he said, if I be lifted up, I wish I had three or four witnesses right now. If I be lifted up, I go all men unto myself. So will you help me? <laughs> will you help me lift him up? I, I came to lift him up. I, I, I believe in lifting him up in the morning and noon and even at night. Because he's been that good. Now, it's been hard this week. Don't get me wrong. I had to come to the rough side of the mountain. Amen. Had to cry sometimes. But when I look back over my life, Amen. I have to confess, God's been good to me. Amen. Has he been good to you too? Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm just glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. So why don't you turn to your neighbor and help me this morning. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. old neighbor. Congresswoman 
uh, Frida Powell for the city of Amarillo. Thank you so much, Pastor Brooks. Um, I appreciate the Congresswoman, so I say speak it because that's where I'm headed. <laughs> I appreciate that promotion so much. So, so it's great to be here. I wanted to just say thank you um, and thank you for um, the installation that this church is doing for their new pastor. Uh, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, honor and glory always given to God, who Amen. is the head of my life. Amen. So uh, let me take this opportunity to thank our Heavenly Father for allowing all of us here to be able to gather here today as we welcome the senior pastor, Morris McPherson, and his family who will be with us for the period assigned by our loving God. Amen. It is a great honor and privilege, too, to have such an event uh, of a great magnitude in the Mount of Blessings, Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am extremely happy to witness this pastor's installation today because it happens once in a while. Amen. So as I quote the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, which says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together yes. for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. So that we know. We can all agree that our Lord is at work to fulfill His agenda and purpose for this church. Amen. So on behalf of Mayor Ginger Nelson, and I also serve with uh, other council members, that would be Elaine Hayes, place one, Dr. Eddie Sauer, place three, and Howard Smith, place four, and our citizens. It is a pleasure for us to extend to you, Pastor McPherson, our, and your family a warm panhandle welcome to the Amarillo community. We are pleased that the Mount of Blessings Seventh-day Adventist Church members are hosting an installation service for you. We thank you for relocating from Houston, Texas to the great city of Amarillo, Texas. I am Frida Powell, council member place two, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to Amarillo. It's always wonderful to have so many people from many different professional walks drawn together for a purpose. And it's, all, it's also good for me to see so many familiar faces. I had not seen Sister Barbara Rowland, but it's good to see her as well. And I see she's doing well, and I thank God for that. Amen. I also thank my parents for teaching me that no matter what title or badge you wear, it does not give you permission to treat others with disrespect. Yeah. Every day they showed me by example that the only true way to be happy is through service to others. And when you serve others, you will definitely succeed. Amen. So I say this, um, for those of you who are, who are traveling, it is our hope that you will have an enjoyable and memorable, memorable stay in our city. If you have not been to Amarillo in a while, you will notice that our downtown, which is the heart of our city, is changing along with our established neighborhoods. So during your stay in our city, please check out Delvin's Restaurant and Catering, the North Heights Discount Cafe. So we have the beautiful Embassy Suites by Hilton, which is our new convention hotel that I'm so proud of. We have a new parking garage, our, our Electric Utility, uh, XL Energy, they have a brand new building downtown. We also have a multi-purpose event venue, which is our new baseball stadium. It's soon going to be uh, ready, April 8th, somewhere around there. We'll have our first game. West Texas A&M University, they now have a downtown Amarillo Center campus, and it is very nice. So I hope you have an opportunity to see it, and there are many, many restaurants downtown as well. So these are just a few of the construction projects that are happening here in our city. And so um, I do want to say to, to Pastor Brooks and our business, I'm in the funeral business, in our business we like to say, it is great to be seen and not viewed. Wow. <laughs> so I just wanted to share, I just wanted to share that with you, okay? So in closing, let me extend a personal welcome to my friend also, Dr. Tamara Colness, for inviting me to share and participate in this joyous occasion. 
Please join me in welcoming our new pastor as he starts to minister to us today. Welcome, Pastor, and all of these people of God love you. Amen, Amen and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Also, we also have a letter from the mayor of the city of Lubbock. And we're going to invite um, invite uh, Elder Floyd Price, who has also served in municipal and county government himself. Amen. Bring your greetings from the great city of Lubbock. 110 miles that way. <laughs> and uh, I served on the city council for 12 years in Lubbock. And so uh, Mayor Pope, friend, personal friend of mine, pastor, he says, welcome to Lubbock and to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Seven-Day Adventist Church. As a church newly appointed pastor, I hope you have a felt welcome with open arms to both Lubbock and the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Seventh-day Adventist Church. As mayor, I want to extend my personal greetings and my best wishes as you begin your ministry duties in our city. I will try to compete with Adam Raw and tell about what we've got. <laughs> we got stuck. <laughs> Lubbock is a deeply rooted religious history of our city is enriched by our residents, strong connection with our spiritual beliefs, often called the city of churches, the strong, diverse, and compassionate element of our church community make Lubbock a more caring and giving city. We are building like crazy. So if you need a house, I got a buddy that's in Lubbock. <laughs> I encourage you to become involved in the community. And they go to call on you when the city council meet because they already got your name up there. <laughs> there are many worldwide organizations, worldwide organizations and institutions that organize special activities and events for residents to enjoy. Again, best wishes as you begin serving your congregation at the Martin Luther King Boulevard Junior Seven Day Adventist Church. And he says, if I can ever be helpful to you. I hope you will let me know. Amen. And I'll hold his name up into your face and I'll hold his slow to the fire. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Far West District, Lubbock and Amarillo. Amen. Again, I am um, going to ask you to come on down and see us. <laughs> There's a thing for those strong municipal uh, <laughs> in, endorsements. <laughs> but we're really happy uh, that those who are responsible for leading our cities and communities would also care about us, and we appreciate that. Amen. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. We also have representation today uh, from the um, Amarillo area. Uh, um, interdenominational ministerial alliance and we have with us uh, Pastor Herman Moore, Pastor uh, Benny Anderson, and Pastor James uh, Tuckman. What actually is made to come up and as Pastor Tuckman will meet us and give a reason Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath. God bless you. Amen. That's one thing that I like to practice. I like to just give the Lord a great round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> We serve an awesome God, don't we? Amen. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. And this too is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice Amen. and we should be glad in it. Amen. You, sir, is somebody I need to get to know. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he has that type of spirit. Yeah. Yeah. He's somebody that I need to know real fast. <laughs> but also, Amarillo is a city of churches. And Amarillo has some stuff as well. <laughs> gentlemen that are standing next to me are part of that stuff. And they're also a part of the city of churches. Uh, I stand representing the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance where I serve now as Vice President. Uh, the President couldn't make it today because he too is in the funeral business and he's having to provide service to a family. Uh, but he does send his greetings to you, uh, Pastor McPherson as well. We just want you to know that the Interdenominational Minister Alliance is here. And one thing I do like about the Alliance is the world magnifies the differences every day. Uh, anytime you turn on the TV, you can see uh, the differences and the, uh, the, the negativity that exists. Uh, but one thing that's positive about the Alliance is we don't magnify the differences. We keep the main thing the main thing. Yes, yes, yes. And that is the fact that we serve a God. Amen. And he sits high and he just looks. So we keep the main thing, the main thing, Pastor McPherson, that is uh, that we serve God and we believe that God wrapped himself in flesh and walked yes. this earth as Jesus Christ. And he was buried and he was resurrected. And he now sits at the right hand of his father. So we do celebrate that. And I, along with Secretary, uh, Anderson and Treasurer Moore, we do extend our welcome to you. Uh, we are open to networking with you and to getting to, to know you better. Uh, so our phone numbers, our homes, our churches are open to you. Uh, and, and we say, you know, in order to gain a friend, you must show yourself friendly. Yeah. Amen. And we hope we are doing a good job of that today. Amen. amen. So uh, if you would, amen, take advantage of our our uh, networking and our connections that we have and we would love to to see you and make sure that you get to to know the mayor and other city officials amen because there are some wonderful people we have a lot of wonderful things that are going on in our city and we just look forward to working with you pastor brooks i did initially say that i was going to be here but i got a text from my mother and she is being released from the hospital at 1 30. so i'm going to have to leave with uh, and i hope you're okay with that so that i can go have my mom get home safely amen, amen. dr clunas thank you so much for extending this awesome opportunity to us again pastor mcpherson your family we welcome you to our wonderful city and we're here to work with you as much as we can amen. Praise Lord, thank you all so much. We're so, we're so thankful uh, that to have us be in a city with so many churches and people who are concerned with lifting Jesus up and, and improving humanity. Thank you so much. Um, we're so thankful also to have with us today uh, Ms. Robin Malone. She's a board member of the Amarillo Independent School District. Amen. And we invite her up at this time. Yes. Yes. I want to thank Dr. Clunas for inviting me to be here today and, and to welcome the pastor here today. Um, on behalf of the Amarillo Independent School District, I would like to welcome you and your family to Amarillo and to the Amarillo Independent School District. Um, I have been, you know, going through this process. There's a learning curve. There's things that you have to learn, things that you say, things you can't say, and I'm so thankful that I have a God that, that oh, guides yeah. me through that yes. process. Yeah. I'm glad that he chose me as a vessel mm -hmm. to get his message through. Yeah. Um, when I looked at the program today, the scripture is, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Yeah. And so what I was saying, Pastor McPherson, he's chose you according to his heart. Yeah. And I want to thank you on behalf of Amarillo and the Amarillo Independent School District for answering that call and accepting that charge. Growing up in the church, I'm a preacher's kid, so I don't know if there's any other ones here, but I am, uh, I'm firmly rooted in the faith, and I understand that there's nothing I can do without him. Yes. All things are possible through him. Um, thank you for coming to our city. I welcome you to our district. If there's anything that I can do as a member of the Amarillo Independent School District, do not hesitate to ask me. 
One thing that we always hear is the word public service, and that term gets overused, and sometimes we forget the meaning of that. I know what it means. Public service simply means I serve the public. Yeah. So I am right. here to serve you. If you or your family need anything, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We also have been blessed. We also are blessed today. Uh, in our presence, we have uh, Ms. Melody uh, Graves. She's an executive board member of the NAACP, in the, and I believe that will be the Amarillo area chapter or the Panhandle. And I just want to say that this is Robin Malone's sister, so. <laughs> and, I, and they both work at Amarillo College, so I appreciate them both. <laughs> and just like my sister, I am loud. So. <laughs> we grew up in the, in the church, so the Lord said he's going to give us a voice for a reason. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Again, my name is Melody Graves. I am part of the Amarillo Branch NAACP. I currently serve on the executive committee. I work with the youth, and I am bringing back a program called AXO. Um, I want to welcome the pastor on behalf of the Emerald Branch of NAACP. We have been in uh, working order since for 75 years. We're celebrating 75 years this year. And so it's just been a blessing, the things that we've been able to accomplish, the things that we've been able to do. Um, in the welcome, as you, if you, as you get to know me, you'll know that I always talk about the work that we have to do. Uh, so we want you to know that we want to include you in the work that needs to be done. For we need the, um, our communities need to be taken back. We need some empowerment to happen. Yes. We need things to change so that we can create a positive future for our children. Yes. And we are happy that God has appointed you for a time such as this to come and help us take on the task that we have. We want you to know that if you need anything, the Emerald Branch and NAACP, the president is uh, Floyd Anthony. He could not be here today, but anytime that you have a concern or a request or anything, you can definitely reach out to us. And also, if you have any youth that you know that need to be involved, if you get here with me, I will get them definitely involved. And so I want to thank Dr. Tamara Kunis today for allowing me to be here today. Thank you, everybody, for the hugs and the welcome. That was like the best part. It just made my heart. <laughs> Today, the, uh, the associate treasurer for the Southwest Region Conference, uh, Sister Mary Moore. We actually just stand and rip and wave. Ye the Lord. Let us continue our worship as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Alan Brooks didn't tell you that Sister Moore keeps us in check. <laughs> That right six. Yeah, you do. Well, I'm gonna have to split you in two. Because down the road, I, I think they think they get a bigger half of you. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, we you send all the council people out, you know, city people send an attorney out. <laughs> throw us out in the woodshed. <laughs> but uh, when you get the love, we're going to put so much money on you, you think you're going to All right. It is good to be here today. See, I'm a pastor and his beautiful bride, his children here, and the conference. Representative Elder Brooks and I go back a long ways. And Sister Moore there, she smiling and everything. She's tough as she has to be. <laughs> and it's good to be here this morning. Really, it is for me. I can't say it for you, but for me. And to be here on the installation of our new pastor and have Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit, that's what makes it better. Amen. We're going to look at our scripture reading this morning, if you would, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Romans, 13th chapter, verses 11 through 14, and 
I want you to go to Matthews 5, 13 through 16. Now, I'm going to do Romans first. Now, you go to Matthew, keep your finger there, because I won't pause that long. Romans 13, chapter 13. What book did I say? Romans. All right. Verse 11 to 14, and we will commence reading that now. Stand, oh, stand. Okay, stand. Stand. Thank you. When you go off, you lose your manners. <laughs> <laughs> and that knowing, I'm reading that this time now. I'm going to read it in your hearing. And that knowing, the time. That now it is our time Hello. to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation near again when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Yes. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in routing and drunkenness, not in chamberlain and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Conclusion, it said, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Make not provision for the flesh yes. to fulfill the lust thereof. Give me about three seconds. Let me turn to the book of Matthews. I'm getting old, so you've got to give me a little time. Matthews 5, 13 through, I mean, uh, 5, 13 through 16 reads as thus. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Am I on my own right one? No, I, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I'm going down to the bottom, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, I know that's right. But if the salt have lost its savor, where will it shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing yes, yes, yes. but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Mm -hmm. Ye are the light of the world. Oh, yeah. A city that is set on a hill yeah. cannot be hid. Mm -hmm. And as I continue on, neither does man light a candle Put it under a bushel, mm -hmm. but on a candlestick, and give it light unto all that are in uh, the house. In conclusion, let your light so shine before men yeah. that they may see your good work, glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. Let's say again. Glorify your Father who is in heaven. May the Lord add richly to those who study daily. Pray for the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the love of God. Thank you, so much. Brothers and sisters, it's prayer time. Those who would like to make it to the altar, you may come down and draw nearer. We're going to invite the remainder to kneel somewhere near their pew where it is possible. And when I say kneel where it is possible, that means if you can get down and get back up, you kneel. If you're not sure you can get back up, maybe you just sit in your pew. Amen. And uh, for those who like to come down to the altar, you may do so at this time. We come and believe in that we serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. We believe in that God can do anything but fail. We believe he has all power. And he can do whatever is needed 
to take care of his people as we prepare the prayer in those in those ways as possible you may deal oh lord our lord how excellent is your name in all the earth you are such a good god a wonderful god and everywhere we have gone and searched all over we can't find none like you oh lord you are so good to us better than we are to ourselves such a loving god and we just want to thank you we want to thank you for life health and strength we want to thank you for looking after our family we want to thank you for a roof on our head clothes on our bodies food upon our table we want to thank you oh lord because you're so great and you're so good but oh lord we have to confess this morning we have not necessarily always been good to you. Amen. Come short of your glory. Keep doing the things you told us not to do, and the things you told us to do. Oftentimes we have forgotten or failed to fulfill. So we strike out upon your grace this morning, asking that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we can be more like Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray that you would stir up in us a hatred for sin and a love for righteousness. Transform us that we may be like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus in our homes, in our marriages, in our families. We want to be like Jesus on our jobs. We want to be like Jesus even while we're going to and fro on our way. Oh Lord, teach us to talk and walk like Jesus. Oh Lord, help us because of our inability to help ourselves. Oh Lord, we pray for the sick this morning. There are those sick who can't get well. But, oh Lord, we know you to be a doctor. And we know there's been times when doctors have given in, and that's exactly when you stepped in. There have been times when doctors have given up, and that's where you have taken it. So we place all the sick in your care. Everybody on our sick list, everyone, our loved ones who are going through physical problems, everyone who is discomfort, oh Lord, we place them in your hand and we pray, oh Lord, that when you would allow us to have the faith to believe you can fix it. Oh Lord, we pray for those in financial supers today, where the month is long, but the ch check is short. Oh Lord, you know the situation so many of us are in, but we pray even now, dear Father, that you will step in and cause that check to stretch. To take care of all our responsibilities. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with legal troubles today. We pray that you will step up and have sidebars for judges. And that you will overrule the man's affairs. Oh Lord, we pray for the government officials and leaders of this nation and worldwide. Oh, Lord, we pray that you will step into the over office and that you will lead God in the wreck because you are the King of kings, the God of God, the Lord of Lord. There are no prime ministers, presidents, or potentates that's above you. Please, Lord, have your way. Oh, Lord, there are some who are dealing with injustice, unfairness, inhumane treatment. We pray that you will step in and defend your people and vindicate. We pray that you will take care of and work everything out for their good and for your glory. Oh, Lord, there's somebody here today who just feel like giving in and giving up. We pray that you will help them to hold on. Help them to stay in there. Help them to never give up and never give in. Give in. Help them never look to the left or to the right to keep their eyes stayed on Jesus. Oh, Lord, help them because they can't help themselves. Keep them. Use your keeping power right now. Oh, Lord. And then, Father, we thank you for our new pastor. Pastor McPherson, we thank you for our new first lady, Sister McPherson. We pray that their transition to this district will be a joyful experience, a rich experience in their life. We pray that they may enjoy representing you in this area. We pray that we may treat them right. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will allow them uh, to represent you. Oh Lord, have your way and bless their lives. And we pray your blessings upon him as he stand up and preach the word today. That somebody's life may be changed. That somebody may even draw nearer to Jesus. And O oh Lord, 
when Jesus he coming in the clouds. And when he says to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back, but bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. May all of us, without the loss of any, be in that number that shall meet him in the air, waving all our troubles over, worlds without end. For these things we ask and pray for in the name that has been highly exalted above every name, the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen.
thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, yes, yes, yes. the giver of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you for those who gave. Yes. Father, we're not going to say we thank you for those who didn't. Because we all have something we can give, even if it's our talent. Thank you, Father, this morning in yes. Jesus' name. We ask forgiveness for our many sins. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Thank you so much.
Amen. 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 We, we uh, love our little children. Amen. And, uh, and, and for our visitors, I believe our children's offering goes to support children's ministry. I think it's a vacation Bible school. Yes. So we want to uh, thank you so much. Uh, and, 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 uh, and Sister Roland, so glad to see you. Sister Roland, so glad to see that you're doing well. Yes, ma'am. I remember when you were sick. Yes. But you know God to be a doctor. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So glad to see you. Um, brothers and sisters, this is a privilege, and it's an honor to be a part of an installation service. I look forward to installation services. In fact, I'm doing four in the next five weeks. Uh, <laughs> yes. but, uh, but it's always beautiful, it's always wonderful to see uh, a new marriage of a pastor pastor's family with a new congregation because our installations uh, it's a renewal of uh, possibilities things that can happen things that God could do through this new relationship and I guess it's, it's always a privilege I'm also glad uh, to be a part of the installation for congregations that I know and love uh, lessons in Martin King Boulevard Junior, Martin King Junior Boulevard. I'm so glad to be here at, and being involved in this nation with these churches, these congregations, these people of God. Also, it's a privilege because Pastor McPherson is a friend of mine. So to be involved in the installation for a friend. And in fact, I remember when we uh, picked up our tents and came out to this part of the country. We came out at the same time. And uh, I was assigned to uh, Tenth Street in Oklahoma City. He was assigned to Philadelphia in, uh, in Enid. In his old auto town. Some people there. I've seen a few, a few big houses up in Enid. Amen. And, uh, and it is wonderful the Lord has allowed him to do in this service out here in the Southwest Region Conference. Of Seventh Day Adventists, and it's my privilege as well to be here. Uh, I bring you greetings this morning from the administration of the Southwest Region Conference. Our president, Dr. Kevin Watkins, he sends his greetings, as well as our treasurer, Philip Palmer. And, uh, and, and I'm so thankful that I have an opportunity to represent uh, the administration here today. I serve the, uh, the Southwest Region Conference as executive secretary. Uh, is the uh, and that is the second officer, and it's a privilege any time you get a chance to go and serve the people of God. It's a privilege. A privilege. Um, I want to uh, just read uh, the short bio that the pastor submitted for the, the uh, bulletin today. Um, he's a humble man, so he didn't tell it all. <laughs> But he just gave a little bit so you know that he believes in service for God. Pastor McPherson was born in Greenwood, Mississippi. He graduated from Southside High School in Memphis, Tennessee. After graduating, he attended Cumberland University where he studied voice and music. He then went on to serve our country in the United States Army. Can someone say amen? amen. After the military, Pastor McPherson was led by God to study theology at Oakwood University. He was then called by the Southwest Region Conference in Dallas, Texas to pastor the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church in Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, through this call, he was blessed to meet his beautiful wife, uh, Keisha, in Fort Worth, Texas. My sister Keisha, she please stand. Pastor McPherson also spent spending time with his uh, uh, Pastor McPherson enjoys spending time with his children, reading, going for walks, and date nights uh, with his wife. Anyone who knows him knows that he loves to laugh, but he also has a serious passion for soul winning. And he loves people. 
He enjoys working with the youth, teaching and preaching. Throughout Pastor McPherson's ministry, he has been used by the Holy Spirit to lead over a thousand individuals to Christ through baptism. He is a bona fide, recognized, distinguished soul winner. So the churches, if you have, if you all have a moratorium on winning souls, you're not going. He's not going to like it. <laughs> but if you don't mind paying a paying a high water bill, <laughs> I wish somebody called it. <laughs> you and Pastor Nick Fields will have a lot of fun. Baptizing people into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor McPherson believes that evangelism is not hard. That every opportunity is a, is a witnessing opportunity. <coughs> that God can use anyone who is willing to be used. Amen. His favorite text is 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, <coughs> shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Pastor McPherson's ultimate goal is to see his family and friends saved in the kingdom of God. Pastor McPherson is a people's person. He's a friendly, uh, jovial person. He's a person who's about the law's business. And he believes the law's business is preparing people for Jesus' second coming. Yes. Witnessing, being a lifeline. And he believes that churches ought to be evangelistic sinners yes. as we work together for the salvation of humankind. Pastor McPherson is a privilege. Joy to be able to be here to bear witness to the God's school. I'm so thankful <clears throat> that you and your wife decided to pitch your tent towards Amarillo and Lucas. I believe this is going to be a rewarding experience, a mutually rewarding experience for these congregations and for God's man serving. We thank God for you. At this time, we're going to turn in our bulletins to a page that's entitled Litany. As we all commit ourselves and recommit ourselves as we begin this new journey of Pastor and Sister McPherson. So I'm going to invite Pastor McPherson to join me now. Right. We will actually want to be able to go and that and usher our sister McPherson now. Thank you. 
Amen. We have the privilege to have these men of God with us today. Are there any other ministers in the audience? Are there any other ministers in the audience that needs to join us? Amen. And I will And I will begin. Holy Father, on this blessed Sabbath day, we acknowledge you as the sovereign God of the universe and humbly request your divine presence in this sacred service today. Congregation. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and give us the spirit. Hello, Elvis. Lord, we lift up to you today, Morris and Keisha. May they be precious in your sight. Endow them with power from on high. and to lead your people in finishing in the work of the gospel. And we're thankful that you have laid your hand upon Pastor McPherson. We are so thankful that you have appointed him to this assignment. And we're so thankful that you have prepared him for this assignment. We're thankful, Lord, that while he's here, that you will be his ever-present help in any and every time of need. Oh, Lord, we pray even now that you will be working upon his heart and in his spirit and giving him a vision of a new thing, that you will use him to lead your people to accomplishing great feats for kingdom's sake. We pray, oh, Lord, that you would crown his head with wisdom, that he, as he leads his people in kingdom business, we pray, oh, Lord, that you will prepare his heart to even deal with difficult people. You know, Lord, you know sometimes we can be difficult. But pray, oh Lord, that you will help him to be like Jesus. Long suffering, patient, not willing that any should perish. Oh, Lord, help your way. We pray your blessings upon his spouse, Sister Keisha. Oh, Lord, we pray that you prepare her for what you have in store for her in this district. We pray, O Lord, that the congregations would treat her with dignity and respect, but that they may realize 
Uh, that as they treat her with love and kindness, and as they treat the pastor with love and kindness, that God will smile upon them. Oh, Lord, we pray that you will join this pastoral team in this church congregation together. Knit them together. We pray, oh, Lord, that you may use them as a powerful, mighty team in these last days. We pray that sinners will be converted through their ministry. We pray that the enemy may be defeated and may Jesus be lifted up. And, oh, Lord, we pray that when his assignment in this area would have come to an end, and when his work on this earth has finished, we pray that he may hear from the lips of Jesus, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with the assignment I gave you. Well, I have signed you to work and take care of a few things. But now, I'm going to give you many. Come on and enter the joys of our kingdom. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And we praise you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Sister Keisha, come and join that husband. Let's give God a hand for the assignment of our new pastor. At this time, we'll be here once again from our choir. Oh, excuse me. They have a presentation. Thank you so much. Lord, 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 Lord. <laughs> okay. At this time, and uh, who will be leading up this presentation? Presentation for the for the pastor, and also I uh, and if we want to, I'll wait on the presentation. The presenter, do we want to uh, post our picture right now? Okay, we good. Should they coming now? Okay, he's on his way. He is drawing now. Yes. And then I hand the mic to the present presentation presenter. <laughs> Thank you.
been outside. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have Explorer Eric and Alana quickly. Thank you. Thank you.
morning, or shall I say good afternoon? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just want to let you know that my wife and myself were glad to be here. Amen. And to come here, I don't mind telling you the truth up front. I am so glad to get out of Houston, Texas. <laughs> I'm more of a country boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be real with you why I'm glad down here tonight. That below sea level I don't like. Uh -huh. Outrageous traffic. Oh, people uh -huh. drive like total maniacs in Houston. Yeah. And I do not like the heat and the crime. There's here in Houston. And I want Pastor Brooks to know I've been praying that prayer ever since they moved me out there. <laughs> I'm not the one who will quit ministry, but I'm about to go get me a day job. <laughs> so I'm glad to be out of here. Glad to be here. Yeah. Amen. I'd like to be up front because that's the kind of person I am. The amount of blessings that we see in your hands. God has called you to be. A mouth of blessing yeah. in love. It. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man, where he at? Oh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. See, like that day. I want him to get fighting y'all up in here, okay? I wonder where I'm going to be. I'm going to be here or I'm going to be there. I don't know yet. And for the great what? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King? I want to know I have a dream. <laughs> My dream is simple. Come on. I believe in coming outside these walls. Yes. Yes. There are people who are dying all around us every day yes. who need to know the message that you and I have. Yes. If you think you're just going to want in this church, you're not going to do it. Yes. you got to go meet them. Yes. Yes. Pastor Brooke didn't tell y'all, they sent y'all a crazy pastor. <laughs> You do agree with me they're crazy people in the church too, right? <laughs> and many of us are fearful of going outside the walls because you have too many crazy people out there. You should have a balance by now and be used to that because they're crazy in the church. Shut like they are in the community. <laughs> and God can use anybody yes. who is willing to be a mouthpiece of him. Yes. I've seen God transform a pimp uh, to a preacher. Uh, yes. A prostitute right. to a Bible worker. Uh, yes. I've seen him do it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the kingdom of God with a starless crown. There will be no starless crowns in the kingdom of God. That person you can't stand you got to find your way of witness in the midst of it. Amen. Let me have a prayer before y'all say, boy, this dude is crazy. Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this opportunity. Yes, Lord. Come to a new vineyard, Lord. New faces, new places, yes. new time. Let's ask of God that you will use us all to realize that we're living on borrowed time and that Christ is soon to come. Yes. So I pray that you will shake our spiritual foundation of God and we realize that we got to get up and do more than what we're doing. Yeah. And that you call all of us for such a time as this. Yeah. All around us, humanity is suffering. All around us, there are individuals who do not know you. Yeah. Who knows that you have called all of us for such a time as this? Yeah. This may be the last Sabbath we get a chance to be here. We don't know that. But help us that while we still have breath, where we're still alive, that we will get up and be about our Father's business. So hide me behind the cross, that only thou may be seen, known, and heard. Yeah. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My passion is meeting crazy people. Now, if you're real with yourself today, you will say, I was one of those crazy people too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
until five, huh? Until Christ found me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you're out in your community, there are people who are struggling. Mm -hmm. And you know some Bible verses, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God is powerful. Yeah. It could change the lives of people. If you don't mind talking. Yeah. I was not being a Christian. Y'all want to know my background? Yeah. You want to know my background? Can I say yeah? Yeah. One of the most sneakiest kids you could ever meet. Yeah. Is that before you today? Hmm? Whoopers is what saved me. Some of y'all ain't never been whooped. God, I would not be in church today. And too many parents today don't want to whoop little Johnny or Sam. Belts don't do no good. But I'm a living witness that that three twisted switch will make you call on the name of Jesus. Child abuse. Uh, yeah. Huh? But yeah. yeah. well, thank God for child abuse. Yeah. Because it saved me. Uh, my dad and mom used to use switching. They were their favorite thing. Uh, dad had a bad habit for the boys of putting our heads between his legs. Oh, yeah. While the back heart is out. Yeah. And he would whoop you until he got tired. Now I like to get a whoop from my dad. You know why? Because he had asthma. <laughs> <laughs> he could whoop long because he had asthma. I finally see our family. My mama, Rachel, had the everlasting on a long winded. Would beat you and you better get out of her sight before it come back to her memory again why I had to beat you the first time. Huh? Well, let me get what I'm coming to see you. The mission of the church. Repeat after me. Yes. The church is God's, church is God's appointed, agency appointed agency for the salvation of men. For the salvation of men. It was organized for service. It was organized for service. Its mission is to carry the gospel, is to, carry the gospel to the world. To the world. From the beginning. Church, church shall be reflected the world to the world, the fullness, the world, the fullness of his sufficiency, of his sufficiency. The, members the members of the church, of the church. Huh? those whom he has called out of darkness, To show forth his glory. To show forth his glory. In other words, God has called us out of our lives. Yeah. Into this marvelous light. Uh -huh. Not to just sit in the light. Uh -huh. But to take the light back to this dark world. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Warning men, women, boys, and girls that there is somebody who cares for you. Yeah. Yeah. There is somebody who loves you. Yeah. And doing all to save you. Yes. That makes sense? Amen. I love knocking on doors. You know why? Why I like to knock on doors? Because I know that there are people out there who need to know the Savior yeah. who saved me. You yeah. can. Yeah. I have met people, young ladies, some of them had 10 kids, yeah. all different moms. Drum, daddy. Come on now. Huh? I have met men who need Jesus yeah. for men to realize that God has called us to be priests. Say it, brothers. Yes. Yes. Say it, brothers. Priests. 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 Protector, Protector and provider. Yes. What's missing in our world today is 
said most women are allowing these sorry men to sit at home, won't work, and play video games all day. We as men must teach our boys how to work. My father didn't play that. He had chores for us to do. And better get done before he get back home. Today, many of our young black men are in prison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Right? We still got to go there and reach it. Yeah. And minister them. Yeah. It is amazing how our society has changed today. It's not like it used to be. My father, 11 kids, eight boys, three girls. Stay with me. Eight what? Three girls. The only scripture he opened in the Bible was be fruitful and watch <laughs> in the military, come home to visit, go out in the park, play balls with the boys who you grew up in elementary junior high school with, and want to bring to my attention. It's amazing that we all grew up fighting each other, and we got the same daddies. What? What did you say? He caught me off guard. I go home and ask my father, Dad, do you have any kids? <laughs> he gets mad with me and he storms off. So I go to my mom. She said, what you say to him? I said, I asked him if he had more kids. Beside the 11. He got by you. I said, boy, you didn't discover that? I said, yeah, I discovered that. And I understood her. Because I know God tells us to be fruitful and multiply, but I don't want to mess around and date with my own sisters, not my own sisters. Leave that alone, man. Leave that alone. Let me go somewhere else with y'all today because I'm concerned about our church. Let me tell you why. Because God has called all of us, Amen. not just pastors. Right. He's called all of us. Matter. To be a witness. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you let me just these few moments, just a holler to just for a few minutes? Yeah. All right. All right. And I'll tell y'all later on about the siblings. All right. <laughs> God has called each and every one of us who profess to be a Christian child of God to be a watcher. Yeah. But a watchman must do more than just watch. A watchman must be alert at all times, huh? yeah. looking for what? Danger. Yeah. Making sure that no one gets up on them too close to commit what? Harm. Yeah. He's called us to be a watchman, but a watchman must do more than just watch. He got to get involved. Huh? He can't sit still. My subject is entitled, No Standing Still. God's people cannot sit still. If you're watching the news and all the stuff that's going on in our world today, the prophets of old wish they were alive to see what has transpired in our day and age. And yet the church is still sitting in position. Come on, man. We won't witness. Help me, somebody. Oh, Many of us don't even have a prayer life. Yeah. Huh? Many of us haven't read a Bible in years. Oh. But I'm here to tell you, that book will open your eyes. Yeah. If you take time and read it, it will show you yourself. Yeah. It will show you that there is a savior who wants to save you, not destroy you. Yeah. It will show you an enemy 
of each and every one of us who's out to destroy us. Yeah. The devil is not your friend. Yeah. He knows there's a hot place waiting on him. Yeah. And guess what? He wants to invite you and me. Come on, come on. How many of y'all love barbecue? Let me see you. You in the church and you can't lie. This is one barbecue you know this. This is one barbecue you want to miss. Huh? We fail to realize that the enemy was there. Huh? And he knows what hell is like. Yeah. But he's doing everything in his power to keep you and I at the wrong side. Huh? If we had to choose today, you know that Pastor Brooks has won everything he put his hands to. And I ain't never won nothing but a headache. <laughs> And we had to choose it here today. How many want to be on Pastor Brooks' side and you raise your hand and say, no, I want to be on Pastor McFrizz's side? I know that you are totally insane. <laughs> and anybody who want to run with the devil need to keep in mind that he's only out to destroy you. Yes. Here we go. Notice this now. Jesus, he just comes from healing people. Walking around, huh? Heal Peter's mom, huh? Answer the centurion's prayer, sir, he even there. He had this go. The sir is what? Healed. But now, he's on a boat, y'all. Sleeping. I like to say snoring. And here are these disciples. How do y'all know about saints? Come on. Some rough brothers, man. Sailors have a vocabulary. They use words that are not found in scripture. Not in the right way. Here they are. A storm comes up. Yeah. And they're all afraid now. Huh? Jesus, oh, that's not chilling. How can this man sleep in this bad weather? But what they did not realize that Jesus is a storm chaser. Yeah. He's a storm comforter. Huh? They wake him out of his sleep. Master, we're going to perish. We can't get all this water out of this boat. Oh, why are you sleeping, man? Jesus oh, like, why are y'all oh, rusty, official man? Why y'all so scared of a little tournament, tournament in this water? Sad, sad. And he speaks. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Now I sort of sympathize with the sailors, y'all. Let me tell you why. I went to the Bahamas. I love swimming. But the conductor took us out deep in that water, and he said it's only about 10 feet. You get to see all these beautiful fish and turtles and all this, and we never see Oh, man. Got that water? <laughs> storm came from nowhere. Waves flowing all over you. And I said, but get this storm, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give it a paddle to y'all. <laughs> but the boat was so far away. And here these waves, this thunder and lightning. Now, I was raised in Mississippi. <laughs> when lightning is hit, you get somewhere, sir. <laughs>
can change the hypocrite. Yes. Yes. You leaving the church, I ain't solving nothing. Yes. Somebody else is going to come and sit in that same thing. Yes. And let me be real with you. I love bringing people from the hood. Say hood. hood. You know what I love bringing from the hood? To help spread some of these saints out.
I said, God, I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to help you know. I mean, I would just shut up. But then the lady would be, she want to see how I do about it. So I said, okay. We're in the house, don't know about it. My eyes are cold. Sitting there talking about it. I was sitting there with her Bible. Talk to her. The roaches <laughs> were quicker than the rats. <laughs>
We've been doing them projects for years, man. It ain't one of them projects. I said, you know something? You don't say you want to. Did you go and visit those who were sick? 
This is going to be the one Well, Jesus, when have we seen you in those situations? If you've done it, to me it is. Yes. Uh, you've done it unto me. Uh, there are family members right now who are outside the ark of Satan in many of our families. Yes. You can't reach them because there's bad blood mm. between you. Yes. When I stand in there and tell you, there is one. Who can change people evil ways yes. from a saint? Huh? Yes. He can make them a saint, though you know they're sin. Mm -hmm. The dirt they do, you can't clean them up. There is one yes. 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 who can. Yes. Why don't we point them to him? Yes. My friends, there are people going to be in hell because we didn't witness to them. Mm -hmm. yes. But we're going to be right there with them. This message is awesome. This message can change life because it is God's word. And if it's God's word, it's going to move forward. He made it clear my word will not return unto me void, empty. It's going to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. I don't know about you, I want to be his mouthpiece. I want to be used by God. I want to talk to the blind, crippled, crazy. I don't care who they are. Jesus is still in the saving yes. Yes. He didn't call him out of darkness to come and sit in the mother's light and do nothing. Young people want to use you too. Young people can reach, young people that you and I can never reach. They have that talk. We got to love them to the church. And I pray that God will bless all of us. Because I want to hit the streets. And I want you out there too. Make sense? Amen. Don't come here with no high heels on. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Put your walking shoes on, gym shoes. Let's go out one, one hour on Amen. Amen. I want y'all to work first before you eat. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't get that, did you? <laughs> Been around a little bit, y'all. If you feed them first, the next thing on the list is lay activity is at home. <laughs> Not coming back. So I want to encourage you. Let's go all out for Jesus. Because he is all that really matters. I felt that the pastor was going to start with a sermon, but he laid down a vision statement. He was like, preached today like Moses when he had all the Levites come over to his side and take up ranks with him and just ask the question who's on the Lord's side. And he, he laid the line down today. There's a plumb line in the church today. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's going to be about the Father's business? Pastor, thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Let me ask you that question today. Who's going to take ranks with the pastor? Who's going to line up on the Lord's side and say, I may not be as strong or as young as I was at one time. Maybe I have been out of it so long that I forgot how to do it. But I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to join in. I'm going to be where I need to be when I need to be there. I'm going to I'm going to go on the street, and, if, and as God gives me strength, I'm going to be a mouse peak for the Lord. A mouse peak for the Lord. I'm going to speak for the Lord. If that's you, you want me to pray for you. Raise your hand. The Holy Father, you see the hands, you read the hearts, you know what the needs are these last days. So many people are standing in the need of somebody to come to them representing Jesus. The only Jesus they'll ever know or see is somebody who's been saved by Christ coming to represent him and doing what Jesus would do if he was here. Oh, Lord, please use us. Please use us. You, so, so, so we recommit ourselves, we rededicate ourselves for the mission to serve humanity while serving Christ. Please, Lord, we, play, we pray right now the Holy Spirit 
will place a burden upon our hearts as ones who must give an account. We pray the Lord that you will place in our heart a desire to see men and women, boys and girls, saved. Oh Lord, please use us. Even when we don't feel like it, may we still run for Jesus. We know you didn't feel like hanging on a cross, but we're so glad you did. In the same way that you sacrificed yourself, help us to be to sacrifice for you. Please, Lord, use us. And we know everything will turn out all right the same way you rose up on the third day victoriously. We would experience victory as we see souls going down to a watery grave, coming up in a newness of life. Please, Lord, use us. Help us. Remind us and strengthen us. We thank you for what we have heard, seen, and experienced. We pray as we leave this place, we be better than we were when we came. For these things we ask for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. The church say amen again. Amen. At this time, let us stand for our closing hymnal, which is found on page 618. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Hymn number 618.
we've actually been together 60 years on the 29th of April. Amen. We've been married for 55 years, so about three. No process. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we thank you this beautiful day. Yes. We've had the Holy Spirit here today. Thank you, Lord. Father, what can we say but thank you? Yes. You're so awesome. Yes. You send us awesome fella here. Thank you, Lord. We love him already. Yes. Father, we know that between you, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and this crazy preacher, and us, we're going to shake Amarillo and love up, and we're going to turn it upside down. Lord, we know you're going to put so many people in these buildings, we're going to have to bust the walls out. Mm. Thank you, Father, for looking down at this time and sending this man. Yes. Now we are going to take up a physical food. And we ask that, would you please bless it for nourishment? Yes. And please, Father, don't forget the hands of prepared it. Yes. Make it pleasing to us. We love you. We need you. We want you. In Jesus' name, we call upon you. And the congregation will say, Amen. 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 Jesus, you're the center of love. My joy. 